You know what? I think that is the face of a man who's been sitting on a broken ski lift with a camera for a good hour. Alright, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host and, um, teacher man, Larry the Chupacabra, and we're back for some more Photoshop here today, looking at an old-timey photo and talking about how to repair things like scratches and tears and bits of dust and grime using the various healing brush tools, which are available here. They look like a little band-aid. So we've got spot healing brush, healing brush tool, the patch tool, the content aware move tool, and the red eye tool. Although we probably won't use the red eye tool because I don't know if you can see any color here, but there is none. There is literally none. There is no color. This is an old timey black and white photo. And this is an old timey dual action lens where you look through this lens and you take photos out of that lens. That is an old camera. I have one upstairs somewhere in a box. So there you have it. So, I mean, where do you start on something like this photo? We've got some scratches here up around this Gigundo mountain. It looks like uh, Italian Alps, Swiss Alps. I don't I don't know. They're, they're big mountains. They don't look like mountains here in Colorado. I mean, they're not as cool as our mountains. It's fine. I, I'm sure they're jealous. It's fine. I'll send them a condolence basket. But, I mean, this he his face is kind of blurry, so we're going to have to fix that. Um, there's these big tears. It So this is kind of weird. I don't know if this is a crease. This, there's like this little shadowy line here across the whole thing. Those can be caused by, like, creasing the photo which is actually probably what this big tear here in the middle is from. Um, it can happen when you have like a piece of paper partially covering the photo in an attic for years and there's sunlight pouring onto it. But the first thing I can tell you about fixing older photographs is when you scan them into your computer, use a scanner with a really high DPI, um, you know, the, the pixels per square inch basically, because the bigger you can get this photo, the more detail that you have into the computer up until a point, uh, the easier it's going to be for someone like Larry or you at home using Photoshop or some guy that you pay online to do it. Um, the easier it's going to be and the better result you're going to get out of it. Uh, this one, if we go up into image, we go to image size. This sucker is about um, 1200 pixels by 900 at a, a resolution of 72. Um, your phone resolution is about 300 DPI or pixels per inch uh, at minimum. I think they're up to like 400 some now, but that's not that's not a great resolution, but that's about your average computer resolution that they're working at right now. Uh, we're not going to mess with the size, but it's just good to reference that we probably want this about twice the size. It would probably help a tremendous amount. So I guess we'll just start jumping in here. So if we hit our J button, which is the healing brush button, and we click the bracket key underneath of the minus icon, we're going to start messing around with, is it set to healing brush? It is set to the spot healing brush tool. So we're going to start with the healing brush tool. Now, what is the healing brush tool, Larry? Well, I guess a good thing that we can look at here is we'll zoom in here next to the ski lift chair. And what the healing brush tool does is it looks at the pixels to either side of whatever you're selecting with it, like it's a brush. Think of it as like a brush that can magically fix things. And it tries to fill in the blank with something that looks approximately like what should be there. So in this case, it's the side of a mountain, which is some light gray tones next to some deeper gray tones. So let's just select this little part of the splotch. And it doesn't look bad. But it doesn't look, I mean, if you zoom really in here, you can see what kind of looks like a thinner smudge on the picture. It doesn't look quite as natural. And this tool tends to work the best when you take it in little small points at a time. So that's not like trying to fill in the entire space of the mountain, because then it's going to replace the mountain with like white. So we're just going to go up here. We're going to kind of replace the top of the mountain there. And we're going to like grab the top of this tear. And we're just going to work our way down here until we're kind of around where the ski lift chair is. And you'll see that this this tear goes through this like part of the ski lift um, armrest. But unfortunately, if we select that, 
it's going to start to delete the um the chair and we don't want it to do that. So we're going to use a whole host of tools in order to fix that. And I'm thinking that I'm going to leave the big tear for other tools and we're going to start in on this cute little tear down here um by the bottom of the mountain. And do note that I actually first I'm going to go back to when I opened the picture. And I'm going to duplicate the layers so I have the original on standby in case I flub something or hit the wrong button and I don't have like, you know, history or other layers to fix it. Um, I will include this example photo in the description of the video so you can play around with this as I mess around with it. And you can do like one of those things where Bob Ross tells you what paints you need and you can fix your photo along with your pal Larry. Oh boy, isn't that exciting? And it'll even have like the other finished bits as I mess with them. So I'm gonna lock that bottom layer and now I'm gonna go up to the top layer, the copy, and I'm gonna start cleaning up this little crack here with the healing brush tool, the spot healing brush tool. The other healing brush tool here actually requires you to select a reference point as if you were using the clone stamp. So I'm on Mac. I don't necessarily remember the keys on PC. I haven't used PC for this in a while, but I'm hitting um, the option button or the alt button. You might have to click alt on your computer, but I'm hitting option and I can select a portion of the uh, image that I want to use for reference so that the computer knows what to paste over top of that little crack. And it's kind of like mixing the spot healing tool with the clone stamp to get a slightly more precise tool. So here's a good example right here. This little line here is on a little crease in the forest where darker forest meets lighter forest. And if I just use the regular healing brush tool, it might smudge that over and it would try to blend them together in a way that looks artificial. With this tool, I can select right here on the edge and then I can clear off right there, right where the two pieces of forest meet. And then I can stop and then it looks like it's properly blended together and I can use little points of reference in the surrounding forest in order to fix the rest of it. Now, something to note on the first pass through when fixing images like this is always zoom out periodically because sometimes when you're really zoomed in at the pixel level, it can be really hard to tell what is forest and what is an actual like crease or a tear. Because when you zoom in really far here, this little piece of forest kind of looks like a, a rip when you're zoomed in. But when you zoom out, it kind of looks like, you know, right here or right here. So it's good to zoom out just to be sure you don't take away something important like, you know, you wouldn't want to zoom out here and like take off this guy's ear only to be nearly done and realize that you have to go way back to give the poor man his ear back. So let's finish up with this crack down here near the bottom. I'm actually going to switch back to the spot healing tool. And I'm going to make my brush a little smaller again with the bracket just underneath of the minus key on your keyboard. Those two brackets increase and decrease the size of your brush. But unfortunately, as I hit command Z, it'll be control Z for you at home. I'm not really liking it kind of looks smudged. It kind of looks smudged in here, like something's missing. So let's go back to that healing brush tool and let's select some random part of the forest. And that looks a little better. It looks a little bit more natural. It doesn't look like I've been mushing it around with the end of my fingertip like I was doing like a finger painting at, in the middle of preschool. We'll just grab some more forest area and we'll just fix around the edge of the town. You can probably leave a lot of the, the tears inside the town just because it's really hard to tell what is tear and what's actually like part of the city streets. Uh, like kind of like right here, these are really big tears. So you just kind of kind of got to wing it as best as you can without a lot of reference material or secondary photos that you could kind of look at to try and see how to best make it look better. It can be a little tricky and you usually don't have that kind of material to help you fix up a photo. But this quadrant of the photo is looking pretty good. Let's move up here to some of these secondary scratches around the edge here. So this uh, this is kind of like a long, narrow one. 
like somebody just kind of like scraped it with a pencil or something. So I'm going to select just any part of the surrounding forest that looks kind of similar, and we're just going to start erasing that. There really isn't a set in stone rule book for this. It's just practice makes perfect. And we're looking to just make this photo look as natural as possible. It usually helps when you have a photo that hasn't been kept out in the open for a while. Photos that have been stored in a case are very obvious because they aren't covered in scratches. They aren't covered in dust. Um, here's another example, not to distract you from what we're doing, but this is an example of a photo that's quite dirty. There's a lot of dust marks here, like this is a piece of dust in the scanner. This wasn't scanned in a very high resolution, so there's a lot of artifacts here. You see these weird little patches? That's where there's not a lot of information. And as you zoom in, like Photoshop has to interpret that and make us approximations of what that looks like. Um, these little black scratches are actually caused by either dust or grit on like the lens or the glass of the scanner. This could have been caused by a smudge or like a dust or dirt particle. Um, a lot of this kind of looks like they just kind of got the photo dirty over time because usually the sun, or not the sun, the sky, isn't usually supposed to look like it's covered in dirt, but it could be a little bit overcast. However, one thing that I can say is this photo is actually in pretty good sharpness. So that's just an example for you guys. Um, out here in these photos that I have to mess with, like this weird photo of people trying to reenact something from Star Wars. Um, where did I have a good example? There was uh, this woman trying to find her mother or something. Where did I do with that? It was just here. It looked like, like, looked like crap. Oh, here it is. So this is an example of a well-loved photo, but maybe necessarily a photo that is kind of hard to fix, and it's going to take a lot of time and you'd be better off having somebody scan this in at a high resolution instead of just taking it at like a small resolution. And this kind of just looks like a cropped snapshot taken from um, like a smaller scanner. So like there's tears here, there's tape. I mean, for goodness sake, take the tape off before you scan something in. But Reddit did a good job of helping them out. So, you know, whatever. So back to the business at hand, we were erasing some weird creases over yonder on the far side of the mountain. So I'm going to get rid of this little thing here. That didn't look natural to me. Um, we'll start removing this hairline fracture in the photo's reality. Just kind of piecing it together as we go across the side of the mountain. Um, it'll be a little touch and go as we reach the person, but I like to kind of, when I fix photos for friends or sometimes I get paid to do it, I like to kind of take them in chunks. So let's, we'll do like the bottom first and then the, the sky, and then we'll leave the, the, the fine detailing in this person, which we'll also have to sharpen a little bit for last. So we'll, we'll stop fixing this line as we reach this guy's pants. So we'll just work on this mountainside. And I'm getting kind of a dry mouth, so I'll need to get a sip of water here in a moment. And I mean, if you can't see the line, don't try to fix the line if it's not there kind of rule applies here. But we're not doing too bad. We're, we're getting the fixes done. And we'll go on the other side of the person and work from this side. And if you feel like you've got a good reference um, point in relation to your brush, just go to town. I mean, as long as it looks kind of natural, you're fine. You know, don't don't just brush in a straight line either. You could kind of like brush to the sides or kind of do like a squiggle or a squaggle or a wiggledy waggle. What, whatever kind of squiggle ziggles you're into. I don't judge you. Uh, whatever you do in the sanctity of your own computer when no one's looking um, because you're on the Internet and you could even be a dog and no one would know on the Internet. That's completely your business. So we've kind of squiggled our way over to this man and his very uh, posh pants. His, uh, what are they, slacks? Is that what you call those? Um, we've mostly got that line down there. Let's go back down to the town and finish removing this giant tear by just kind of grabbing different areas of, like, the trees around it. Frankly, I don't even know if that's a town. That might just be a place where people park to go up to the mountain. 
Clearly people aren't going up that mountain, so this might even just be the edge of town where all like the, the, the weird hobos live. I mean, some hobos are weird, man. Don't make it don't make it odd. So we're just gonna fix up this tear. And again, you don't you don't know what this is. People probably don't know what this is supposed to look like down here. You can just kind of guess and it'll look pretty good. Um, if you're getting paid to do this, maybe kind of pay more attention to it. But if you're just fixing stuff for grandma or Uncle Ellis or your aunt, like I was fixing some stuff for my Aunt Vicky, like I take time with it, but I don't sweat the small stuff because sometimes the small stuff will drive you insane and no one's probably going to notice it unless it's in the middle of the person's face. There are times to freak out about stuff, and then there are times they're not to. Now, I don't know if you caught what just happened when I was up there on the top of that mountain, but as you look here, the area that I'm sort of drawing over is changing the more of the deep information that I'm sort of taking in. So the more I brush using this tool, the more the computer analyzes what I'm doing, trying to get it to fill in correctly, and it kind of changes. Now, this can be useful. This can be tremendously useful, especially on this mountainside where none of these details are particularly important. But it can also be a pain in the butt because it can, like, force you to take smaller strokes with your repairs because otherwise it's going to start changing color and like trying to blend into an area where it's not supposed to blend. And that can be kind of poopy. So just be aware of that and be careful. So let's just, we'll just work our way up here, up the mountain slope, because we're fancy. We're pioneers of the digital age. And I don't, I don't remember where I got this photo. I know it's off of Reddit, but like, I just kind of keep an eye out for these things. This was like posted in probably like our old, whoops, our old school cool. And I sometimes fix those like I fix some guy's grandpa's like a uh, picture back when he was in the uh, one of the UK militaries fighting in World War Two. That was pretty OK. But uh, people always who are not professionals at this always have some opinion on what I'm doing when I fix photos. I'll tell you a secret. Larry does some of this for a living, and he knows what the hell he's talking about when he does this. So I kind of quit doing that because people are really annoying on Reddit sometimes. So we've mostly got the area down south kind of cleared and clean. Now, we got this big old ugly black thing here. This could be like part of a railing that this other person's sitting in, like uh, the person that took this photo might be on the adjacent uh, ski lift. They might be on a railing waiting for Uncle Tony here to get off the ski lift. We don't know. But one of the things you could do is you could grab the crop tool and you could just move this in because maybe the only thing your family really wants is you to crop in on Uncle Tony so that they can put him in a commemorative uh, picture frame because they have, you know, they don't get to see Tony a lot and that's all they really want. Then you could just do that. You wouldn't have to worry about 90% of this. Again, it's all about knowing what someone wants to do with the picture and whether or not uh, you need to keep certain details. If you don't need the rest of the mountain, chuck it. That's basically the rule, unless you really want to practice. I mean, it's completely up to you. So just while it's here, since it's just kind of sticking out there in a really annoying way, uh, let, whoops, what the heck? That's new. I'm used to the hand tool just kind of letting me move around all willy-nilly. So that was different. That was disorienting. So we need to fix this little railing. Now, you could just chop this off and no one would be the wiser, but we're better than that. We're fancy. So we're going to try and fix that railing using the stamp tool. Oh my goodness, that's too big. All right, stamp, you need to settle it down. You've been on the sauce too much today. So all the stamp does is whatever you target with a little target hitting the alt key or the option key, it's going to draw over as if that was like the brush color and it's going to look really weird if you don't use it correctly. But we want it this way because it's not going to try and interpret what we're trying to draw. It's just going to draw whatever I want it to draw and it's not going to give me any lip. So we're just going to target part of this rail. That's all one color. 
And we're just going to start slowly drawing over it, fixing any blemishes on it, because that's going to make it easier. And we're just going to try and zoom in here so we can still see the black texture. And we're just going to try and figure out like what part of this was supposed to be railing and what was supposed to be mountain. And don't be afraid to hit like control Z or command Z if you mess up. That's what the history in Photoshop is for. So if you screw up, you can hide the evidence and then burn the house down. And no one needs to know what you did. Not even Larry won't say anything. Grandma never has to know what you did to this railing. I promise. All right. So that railing looks pretty good. We're going to just kind of grab some texture around here. We're just going to fill in this little white uh, splotch up to the black part. And if you don't get this perfect, again, no one knows what this railing's supposed to look like. This railing, if it even still exists, was probably replaced a bajillion years ago because this picture's back from, like, well, before they had color in the pictures. So there we go. And that uh, looks passable. No one's... No one knows what we did here. They'll never know. All right, perfect. Uh, what else we got? I mean, I guess we just work our way up and we just start going to town on the mountains. Yeah, you're a dirty mountain, aren't you? You've been with all of the skiers, haven't you? All right, we're just going to grab the healing brush tool again. That's under J. I'm going to increase the size of it a little bit. And, you know, I'm, I'm liking the healing brush tool more. I use a lot of the spot healing brush just because it's quick, but this lets me just kind of go across bigger swaths at a time. So I'm going to say, yo, go with this one whenever possible. But be careful when colors change suddenly, like it just did, because then if you get too close, it looks like someone's smearing the picture, and you don't want that. That looks weird, and Grandma starts to ask questions about what you were doing at the same time as fixing the pictures. The answer is not the MDMA. That's the answer. That's just... You can kind of flop around a lot. If you're getting tired of fixing the sky, you can just go over here to the mountain. I mean, it, it, you're, you're fixing it in your own gosh darn time. So take whatever time you need. There we are. That's right. That's right, mountain. I'm going to make you beautiful again. They won't even know someone tore you in half with a crease because they, like, folded you up and put you in somebody's pocket because the, the contents of this picture were somebody's sweetheart at one point. All right. Ah, that, that, that line was a little bit too liney. We need to be careful that we don't uh, make the mountain look like it's got like a hangnail or something. And I mean, sometimes it's hard to tell if there's like another hidden like line right here. Kind of feels like there should be, but there really isn't. Yeah, it looks like there's just one across the picture, but I'm not fixing that. Because this is a tutorial. I'm not giving this picture to anybody. Don't be crazy. Don't be crazy. All right. Whoops. Make sure your car target cursor doesn't end up underneath your brush, or else you're just going to brush over what you already had. So that's a bad idea. That is a really big honking thing. So... Just to show you guys what it does, just for the sake of argument, um, let's play with the patch tool. So the patch tool is basically just like the lasso selector tool. You got this little dancing, like, black and white line. My teachers in school used to call it the dancing ants. And so what this does is it basically just takes a big chunk and you can drag it somewhere and it'll try to fix that chunk based upon wherever you drag the second circle on your screen. Unfortunately, now we have a mountain peak in the middle of our sky, but that's actually something we could fix pretty easily. And you could take big chunks, little chunks, chunks that like to play on sidewalks or however the Oscar Mayer Wiener song goes, and then we can just start kind of fixing it. But don't fix too much of the sky. Like, you don't know what part of this is clouds, and you don't know what part of this is mountain. Maybe Superman was out here. Maybe this is the only picture we have of Superman before the aliens disintegrated him in space. You wouldn't want to not be able to recover Superman from the sky, right? So we can actually pretty quickly, using the patch tool, and that's the thing that looks like a circuit board here. Patch tool, see that right there? Patch tool, that's what you want. That's what all the fancy people use. 
And then we can clean up that sky, and that looks actually pretty good. Screw, uh, just slowly using the healing brush tool. The healing brush tool is for places with in fine details. Uh, so here's something. We have, like, a weird... I don't know if you can see this. There's, like, this line here. Like, that's the edge of the photo paper that this was used. Like, you can also see that the, the, for the lift gets kind of chopped off. So, in fact, I'm not going to fix that. I'm just going to crop that picture a little bit. And no one even knows that whoever scanned this in was bad at whatever they were trying to scan it in with. Look, people, when you send me scanned photos to fix, learn how to use the built-in scanner crop tool, you peasants. That's right. You heard me. I called you peasants. So, well, you guys listening to this tutorial aren't peasants, but whoever scanned this is a bit of a peasant, because there's, like, bits of dust on here, like right here, that I'm gonna have to fix. Like, who even does that? Clean your scanner before you use it for important family photos. Although, I mean, sometimes you can't clean a scanner. Sometimes they're just beyond saving. You just gotta roll with it. And, you know, you don't need an expensive scanner to start fixing people's photos, I should mention. Um, scanners are pretty cheap. I have this combination photo printer slash scanner from HP, and it's not by any means the top of the line scanner, but it's more than enough for this size picture. And I mean, no one's, no one's going to want to print out a picture of Tony here, the size of like the billboards in Manhattan. No, no one's going to do that. Don't be crazy. No one's going to do that. So let's just finish up the top of this mountain and then we'll go after uh, the person and their face and their head and all that stuff, which only slightly sounds like a mafia hitman. Only slightly. But that's part of the fun. So remember when you're fixing these edges to find a similar looking edge, if you can, in order to repair them. But, you know, the fun thing about mountains is mountains aren't exactly cut out with a straight razor, so. If they look kind of scraggly, you can just tell Grandma that's how mountains are supposed to look. What's she going to do? Call a mountainologist? Actually, she might. She's crazy. Grandmas can be crazy. But that's why we love them. Because you don't mess with crazy grandmas unless you're inside the family. All right, let's just clean the rest of this tear. That mountain looks almost like a mountain. Would you look at that? Isn't that fancy? See, you folks following along at home? Now you know how to use the repair tools. And some of you might have all just kind of quit out on me, because you're scrubs. That's fine. I mean, you just get the information you need from this tutorial and you move on. That's the whole idea of the tutorial. I don't want to keep you neat here if you've got important photo fixing work to do. If you lied to Uncle Tim and you told him you could fix this stuff in half an hour. You got, you got, uh, you've got a life of, 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 you're living a lie and you've got to, you got to live up to that now. I don't want you to disappoint your uncle or your aunt or your sister or your mother or you. Maybe you do, don't disappoint yourself. Don't you do that to you. You deserve better. All right. So got to be careful. Tony's got this ear thing going on here. And I don't want to chop his ear off. I'm not like the Brazilian mafia. I don't go for ears. I'm more of a toes guy because you're not going to see toes most of the time. And you don't really need most of them. You could just replace those with some Jenga tiles or something. I mean, they're toes. I wouldn't feel bad if I lost my toes. I use my, my hands more than that, so the toes can go. So we're going to be really careful as we try to fix this railing up here. We're going to select the middle of the rail, just so that we kind of have, like, you know, the, 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 the cylinders lined up when we brush over them, so we don't get, like, a wonky cylinder like that. We don't want that. That's bad. Don't you do it. Don't you do it, Timmy. I believe in you. Just like that Falcor guy didn't, because he's a dick. Don't listen to Falcor. You can do it. I believe in you. You can fix this photo with me. Well, we'll make Tony look sweet in no time. After I finish fixing these last few tears, and we go into his face. There we are. Oh, that railing. Oh, it's... It's, it's beautiful enough. I'm going to go insane if I stare at it any longer. This railing looks like it's all messed up and bent. I'm not responsible for this, but it's going to look weird in the photo, so we're going to fix that. You're welcome, people that made this railing. 
Bet you didn't even think someone's gonna have to fix this, did you? I'm actually gonna use the clone stamp for that, just so we can borrow the rest of this railing. All right, and my cat knocked something over in the other room. That's my favorite. That kind of looks a little wonky, but that's what the interpretive gener uh, algorithms for this uh, tool are for. That we can erase all the evidence that we ever jankled with this. Eh, this is all falling apart on us. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta salvage this now. No one, no one must know what we did to this rail. This... Actually, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Just be, just be gentle with this. So it doesn't look funny. There we are. Just a little more. It's all about the placement of the target cursor. Just to make sure that this doesn't look wonky. In fact, that kind of looks wonky. If I was doing this for, for the dollars, I'd restart that from scratch. Which is why I have infinite history, well, near infinite history, attached to this, uh, this file. So, if I need to go back, I can. But that's fine. It just kind of looks like it's a weird, like, reflection now. But now we gotta talk about Tony and his face. So Tony has got a splotch on his nose, which we'll actually use the spot healing tool for. We'll make that really teeny tiny. And then that mostly takes care of the splotches on his nose and we'll take care of any like two dark pixels in his hair. You know, his face isn't bad. It's just really blurry. So let's go down and fix these spots in his pants, his pantaloons, his little lines that we didn't get before. Careful not to, like, remove an obvious seam from his pants, like a stitching seam. Again, if it looks fine, don't mess with it, if no one's gonna notice. It's like when you're in, like, a critique in school, and if you guys are in school learning this stuff, if your professor didn't bring up something wrong with your piece, don't tell them. They don't need to know. If they can't figure it out for themselves, they can just give you that A and like it. Alright? That's one of the things you should learn. Some teachers are a-holes. Like some of my teachers that I won't name because they're a-holes. One, the, one of their names was Brian. Actually, two of their names were Brian. So, um, there you go. Yeah, that looks pretty spiffy. What do you guys think? Now, at this point, we'd probably take it and we'd, we'd throw on, like, some curves. And we'd make it, we'd add some, like, contrast. I don't know if I like that much. In fact, this picture looks like it's still got some color in it. So I'm going to open up hitting Command U or Control U on the on the PC. Oh, that is that is kind of kind of brown. I'm going to pull out the remaining color because it's not supposed to be brown. It's supposed to be black and white. It's not supposed to be brown. Sometimes I forget to check that. I, my my brain just kind of sees brown and says it's close enough. So now. We can fiddle with the curves, and it won't look quite so funny. So let's let's uh, let's bump up a little bit of the contrast. We we just kind of it's kind of gray. It's kind of just a gray, and we'll just kind of give it a little bit more contrast. You could play around with this all day in like Lightroom, but um, this is a tutorial. We're not that crazy, so there you have it. Uh, so we've got that. Boy, he looks pretty spiffy. I mean, we we did a you and you and I did a pretty good job. We're we're a team. We're a team now. Don't you doubt your participation in this. You're an accessory to the things that we have done, which makes it sound like a murder has been committed, which it hasn't yet. I mean, I I don't know where this tutorial is going to go. We're not done yet. So I don't really think we need to do too much fixing here. Too much remaining fixing. But we could sharpen this up a bit. So let's select both of these. And I'm going to hold the control button. I'm going to merge those. Whoops, that's not the right button. I'm going to hold option. And this is basically going to stamp those two layers into a new layer, preserving those other two layers without having to manually make a copy. So there we go. So I guess for you guys, hold alt and then right click those two and select merge layers. And it'll create a copy for you without destroying the original two. And then on this one, there's a couple different ways that we could sharpen this. I didn't really intend to talk about sharpening, so maybe I won't go into too much detail. But the two main ways is you can use sharpen. I prefer smart sharpen, or just a light bit of shake reduction. 
But the other method that I use, use a lot is something called a high pass filter. I'm not going to get technical like with what this means, but you can kind of figure it out for yourself. It basically just takes all the hard edges of the image, all the high contrast points like edges or features on your face or dark spots, and it kind of like outlines them in like a ghostly thing that we're going to overlay over top of the image. So to do a high contrast filter, you got to copy the original file or the original like layer that you want to apply it to. And you go down to other under filter at the top here, and then you select high pass. And now suddenly, even if it wasn't black and white, everything kind of looked like you put a piece of like cellophane over it, didn't it? So the idea here, when you look at this image, is you kind of get like the edges of the features that you want, and you don't go so crazy that everything is selected, because then when you apply this to the image, it's going to look crispy. Like somebody put like a cookie in the oven too long, or it's like crunchy grass outside. It's going to look too crunchy. So this is about the kind of level of detail we want. We don't really want too much detail in the surrounding mountains here or the town, but some of the some of the streets can be fine. So we're going to go at like four to six pixels radius. We're going to select OK. But what do you do with this? This doesn't exactly look like a photo, Larry. I'm getting there. Just settle your pants down, mister or missus or a pan dimensional demon. That's both a he and a she at the same time. I'm getting there. So we're going to go to the filter section here, this little hole down here underneath search, and we're going to go to soft light. And now it's blended these two layers together. And oh, my gosh, everything just got so much more detailed. And I just figured out that there is, in fact, like a little line right where I thought there was one going right through his mustache or where a mustache would be. But we're not worried about that because this is a tutorial. If he, this was a tutorial, you should fix that because your client would probably notice that and be spicy. Maybe. So that kind of sharpens him up, but it's my goodness. Is that just really sharp? So I'm going to go to opacity. I'm going to turn that down to like 30%. I'm going to kind of toggle it a little bit. And it kind of gives some clarity. I think I'll bump that up to actually like 45%. And it gives a nice level of clarity to that image that it didn't have before. But we're not going to go crazy with it because then it's going to start to look artificial and it's going to look like you did something to it that it should you shouldn't have. Now, the alternative, if we turn this layer off and I'm going to make yet another copy of this layer is we can directly filter this layer using the smart sharpen. Uh, here we go. Smart sharpen. And I'm going to pull this out so we can see all sorts of stuff here. Now, something to note with sharpen less is more, because if you bump this all the way up, it's going to start looking like the Clone Wars are happening. Oh, my God. What did you do? We're on Mars in another dimension. Larry, you're a crazy person. Well, we're not going to we're not going to do that. I'm actually going to reset that. Uh, smart sharpen. There we go. Yeah, less is more because this is basically doing the same thing as that high pass filter. It's just applying it directly to the photo for you in case you're not quite as uh, suave or practiced at using it. So you have the option. And then there's stuff you can mess with here with like shadows and highlights. That's not part of this tutorial. We're not talking about that. We're just going to add like a little example of what we're doing. We'll just add a light bit of like, let's say like 30%. And we got, that looks pretty good. What is it, what is it doing to our, just drag this image around. Sometimes it can take it a minute to like process the sharpening, but that doesn't look too bad. Let's kind of bump that up a little bit for the pixel radius for like, so basically what this does is it's looking for like the radius in which the 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 math, the brain of Photoshop is going to look at all the pixels to try and figure out what it should sharpen for you. And then we'll just we'll just increase that just a smidgen. I want to see his face. I want to see it. See your face, Tony. Look at me. Look at me when I talk to you. Yeah, it's, I'm talking to you through time and space through a picture. It's a weird warlock power. Don't judge me. I mean, that looks pretty good. Let's just bump that back to like 50 percent. And then let's so reducing noise. 
When you sharpen things, sometimes you get like a static effect. Like it looks like snow on the TV screen. This can reduce it, but it, again, too much of that makes it look like you're smearing the, the picture around with your fingers on finger painting day. Be careful with that one. So that's that's enough. That's enough. So you might not be able to see this on the video, but it is marginally better. And we can even overlay both of these together to get a pretty reasonably sharpened image. I'm actually going to turn that down to 30. And yeah, that, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, again, just kind of fidget with the different layers to see what they do, what your changes have made, and see if you like it or not. And that's how you use the, the, the healing brush tools and how you use the clone stamp and all that fun stuff. Hope this was helpful to you guys and gals at home. You can go out and you can kind of fix uh, old photos now. You might want to make some like curves adjustments to this a little bit. And you can even select different parts that might be too dark or whatever. But this picture is not bad from the get go. Let's not talk about this other picture for right now. We'll just close that. We're good. But yeah, that's how you use all those tools and how you fix kind of an old timey photo. I've been your um, your teacher today, Larry the Chupacabra. Uh, this has been the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I hope this has been helpful to you. Let me know if you have any questions in the description. Again, the files for this are in the description if you want to play around with them yourself or play along with me as I fix things like it's a Bob Ross tutorial on TV and maybe check out uh, my gaming channel after you've subscribed to my channel because clearly you made it this far. You love me. So do the thing. Do the thing. All right. Catch you guys and gals later. Have a good one. Bye.